Hello everyone, welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on the characteristics of component. For this video, I'm going to continue the discussion on the passive component inductor. The objective of this video is to disclose or to discuss how can we actually find the distributed capacitor in the coil or inductor. Under the inductor, we have 4A, 4B, 4C, and this video, 4D series. Okay, so all these part 4 series, they are all discussing the characteristics of inductor. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Once again, thank you so much. This is what I have discussed early on on the passive component inductor. This diagram here shows a picture of inductor. And you can see over here, okay, inductor actually also have this distribute capacitor, which is the coupling between the two coil or the numbers of them here. They actually have this distribute capacitor. Overall, they will have the total distribute capacitor from this coil here, which is denoted by this inductor equivalent circuit. So this CD is basically all these little, little CD contribute add together to form the total CD, which is the distribute capacitor for the overall inductor. Okay, typically question you will ask is, how can we actually find the value of this distributed capacitor? Typically, when we look at the data sheet, most of the time, we will not be able to find the distributed capacitor value. Even if we given this distributed capacitor value, how can we prove that it's really this capacitor value? So in this video, I'm going to share with you how can we do a rough calculation what will be the value of the distributed capacitor? Let's start by understanding how can we actually find the distributed capacitor. Okay, for example, in black, basically they are formed up by the inductive uh, equivalent circuit. Okay, what can we do is basically we add another C value in parallel with the inductor. So with this, okay, we actually will have a sub-resonant frequency, okay, we actually can measure what will be the sub-resonant frequency by adding another capacitor in parallel with the inductor. Next, we change to another inductor value. And when we change another inductor value, probably you will see that there will be a shift of sub-resonant frequency. Again, from here, I will notice what is the sub-resonant frequency. So over here, you can see that basically I know the value of C1 and C2 okay, because these are all the capacitors that I add in parallel with the inductor. And I can use a spectrum analyzer okay, to measure the sub-resonant frequency for both C1 and also C2. You can see that they basically have some shift in terms of the sub-resonant frequency. So from this, I actually create two equations and I actually have one unknown, which is the distributed capacitor. So how can we actually calculate this distributed capacitor value? Okay, so instead, by words, okay, let me work out an example to show it to you. Okay, the resonant frequency of a coin when shunned with a 100 pico capacitor, it is actually 800 kilohertz. At 1600 kilohertz, okay, which is double the frequency, Okay, it must be shunned with a 10 picofarad in order to have the resonant frequency at 1600 kilohertz. Okay, so from here, how can we determine the distributed capacitor of the coil? Okay, so this is the equivalent circuit of an inductor. Okay, we can actually obtain the sub-resonant frequency by using this equation here. So which I have also shown to you, how can we actually obtain this sub-resonant frequency equation? Okay, but at this moment, okay, it's not the interest to reprove how we actually can obtain the sub-resonant frequency here. So we will apply on this equation 
in order to calculate the distributed capacitor of the coil. So like I mentioned early on, so basically you can see that when the capacitor is 100 picofarad, okay, the resonant frequency is 800 kilohertz. When the capacitor in parallel with the inductor, okay, a capacitor of 10 picofarad, the resonant frequency is at 1600 kilohertz. So from here, I actually obtained two equations. Okay, so this is what I mean earlier on. So when actually I put another capacitor value, having 100 picofarad, okay, in parallel with the inductor, okay, I actually have this equation, okay, which is the sub-resonant frequency of 800 kilohertz. When I change the capacitor value to 10 picofarad, okay, in fact, I will obtain another sub-resonant frequency, a higher sub-resonant frequency. So from here, you can see that I actually come up equation one and also equation two, and I can actually calculate what is my distributed capacitor value. So let me show it to you. How can we obtain the distributed capacitor value? Okay, so these are the two equations that I actually obtained from here. So what I need to do is basically, I actually use equation two over equation one, okay, which means that this equation two over equation one. Okay, so from here, okay, you can realign all the formulas here. So these two pi, we will cancel each other. Okay, so finally we obtain this equation here. Okay, so next, okay, we can cancel away this L, okay, because they are, we can just cancel this L, okay, and then we substitute the value of C1 and C2, which is 100 pico and 10 pico. Okay, and we also can substitute the resonant frequency of FO2, which is 1600 kHz, and also for F01 is 800 kilohertz. So in order to remove away this square root, okay, I need to square this number. So over here, this will be retained over here. So next, we can do a simple mathematics. 1600 divided by 800, which is 2, and 2 to the power of 2 is 4. Okay, so over here, this whole term become 4. And I actually can do a cross product. So 4 multiplied by 10 pico, so I actually get this 40 pico. And 4 multiplied by CD, okay, so I actually obtain this 4 CD. Okay, so on the other side will be on top here. So from here, okay, what I need to do is basically I move this CD over. So 4 minus 1 become 3 CD, and I move this 40 pico over. So 100 minus 40 become 60 pico. So from here, I can easily calculate what will be my distributed capacitor value, which is 20 picofarad. So can you resonate how I actually calculate my distributed capacitor? So what I need to do is I know the value of C1. I know the value of C2. When I actually put them in parallel with the inductor, okay, the sub-resonant frequency actually change. And when they actually change, I actually can have two equations. And from these two equations, I only have one unknown, which is the distributed capacitor. And from here, okay, I have shown it to you how can we actually calculate the distributed capacitor. With this, i like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Bye for now.